Welcome to the Return of Roots Mill to Vet podcast, your guide through the journey from military to veterans in the community. This podcast is dedicated to service members, veterans, and their families. Get ready for inspirational stories and experiences generously shared by our amazing guests. Stand by for the sound of freedom. Before we dive into today's episode, we want to remind you of two essential resources, the 988 National Hotline for Mental Health Support and the MYTT365 app available at mildevet.com. Both are valuable tools to assist you in your transition journey. Now let's get to the show. Return to Roots Podcast. Welcome. Today we will bring you Josh Johnson. He is the Director of Program Special Operations of the Transition Special Operations Transition Foundation. Without further ado, Josh, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, brother. So uh, before we get started and too deep into this, hey, everyone, hit that subscribe button, share it to other people out there. And now let's figure out how we could get a hold of you, Josh. What's the best way to get a uh, get in contact with you? Yeah, LinkedIn is, is always the easiest one. You know, as as once we're outside of the military, that's how everyone communicates is via LinkedIn. Uh, you can also go to our website, uh, SOTF.org, uh, and reach out to me through there. Nice, brother. Nice. So we talk about transitions a lot in this uh Mill to vet tribe. So one thing that I'm going to ask from you is what is some content or media that you recommend our listen listeners digest while they're in their transition? Yeah, oh, man, boy, there's so much. So, um, you know, Herb Dean put out a book, um, the transition mission, which is probably one of the best ones that I've read. Um, you know, it's just, it's kind of a, a, a down to earth, like this is the right way to go through it. Um, if you have not heard of uh, the Donovan and Banks Foundation and the Janus program, I absolutely recommend you you reach out to those guys. They they give a pre transition uh, training that that sets all veterans up for success. Right, you get ready to get out. Uh, here's how to get life insurance. Here's what to look for. Here's here's how to uh, understand uh, the VA process. Uh, anyone that is within 24 months, I absolutely encourage them to, to reach out to them. Speaking of awesome people that we know, a big out, big old shout out to Abigail Manning for putting us in contact. She yeah. is amazing. And thank you for coming on the show and joining us. Yeah, and we love Gator. She's awesome. Yeah, she's she's good people. So we started working with Abigail uh, at the beginning of the year. Um, our, you know, the the Special Operators Transition Foundation had grown to the point that uh, we needed to bring on some additional uh, executive coaching, and we ran her through a, a, a pretty tough gauntlet, to be honest. Uh, we've we've got really high standards in, in in the folks we want to put on, and so we did some beta testing with her. Uh, had four of our fellows go through her program, and she just knocked it out of the park. Uh, absolutely pleased with with the executive coaching that she provides and uh, the knowledge the about oneself and what they're what they're capable of uh, and and kind of pulling that out of the individual and getting them ready for uh, for what they're about to go through. Abigail is on point. I fully agree and I support that message. Nice. Um, with that, right? <clears throat> so you were in the military for over thirty years, right? Um, one of the la- first questions that I like to ask is going to be a two part, right? What if you could go back in time and you could give yourself advice before you even join the military, what advice would you give yourself? Uh, join the air force and become a pilot so you can get guaranteed. <laughs> Bro, those bonuses, those bonuses, holy <laughs> moly. Dude, the number of times I sat on the ground waiting for Xville, and so it was like, "Hey, can't, we're, it's been delayed two hours. Mandatory crew rest." Like, "Hey, I, I'm also tired. I could use a nap. If someone would just come pick me up, I could go home and take one." Now, I uh, so my my boss, the the CEO of, of 
uh, Sodif is a AFSOC pilot. So uh, Austin Moore, Colonel, Colonel retired Austin Moore. And we just pilot on him like, hey, man, we, we, we need to get this done, but we understand crew rest. Can we at least have a bite of water? He's like, no. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah oh man uh, yeah oh, I, I don't want you to i don't want to interrupt your madonna time all right <laughs> that's yeah that's absolutely right no um to be honest what what i would, would encourage everyone to do whenever they're in the military is find the role that they're they're going to be most passionate about doing right uh, and then make an impact from that position. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in, in special forces. I did my last 22 years, uh, as a green beret. Uh, and I met some super impactful guys that, that have done some amazing things around the world, but I've also met enablers that made all the difference in the world, all the difference in the world. Um, in 2010, uh, did a deployment over to Afghanistan. And uh, we brought along one of our cooks, uh, we brought a couple of them, but we brought this one guy uh, in particular, Brian Wright. Big shout out to Brian if anybody knows him. Uh, we just, we started calling him the morale officer because he he said, hey, you know, he, I remember the, like the first week we were in theater, we were getting things uh, operationalized and he came in and he's like, hey, sir, what time are you guys doing your op syncs? And I'm like, but, but why are you asking that? And he goes, well, I just need to know what time teams are coming in so I can have stuff ready for him. And I just, I was just assuming that he was going to have, you know, Hey, your, your three standard meals. And then, you know, the midnight rats, which is, you know, all the, the pre box stuff that just kind of gets left on a shelf and a cooler photo sodas or whatnot. I was like, what, what are you planning on doing? He goes, I just need to make sure that the guys know that when they come in, they have a hot meal. So I just need to know what, what, what time they can be expected back. And I was blown away. Right. Did not expect that coming up, coming out of, uh, coming out of a cook and we had five different outstations that, that uh, we had teams that were, were manning. And whenever one of the teams would just start having kind of the, that operational slump and you could tell that things were getting bad, boom, deploy the morale officer. We'd send Brian right down there. Uh, he'd be there a couple of weeks and we'd, we'd uh, get ready to pull him. And team servants would, would start calling in and they would have every reason in the world that Brian had to stay with them. Uh, I mean, just every reason in the world and super creative, uh, you know, op cons and all these different things where they were going to take Brian out and make sure that he could, he could, uh, you know, get his, his combat action badge and just, okay, brother, I get it. Brian's awesome, but I got another team that needs him. So we, we would set him on. And then, um, I had another guy named Will James and he was, uh, he was a loggy, a, a, a logistician. But that guy would just work magic whenever, wherever he went and he would just make things happen at just, Hey, what do you need? I can do it. And you'd see him working all, you know, all hours of night up early in the morning, equipment would be ready. Supplies would be on time. And he was just passionate about making an impact for where he stood. And so if I could tell any veteran or pardon me, any soldier, uh, sailor, airman or Marine, Find out what you're passionate about and make an impact from that position because it will be felt and it will be remembered. And now shifting it forward, right? You, you transition, you're in charge of the Transition Foundation. What advice would you give yourself and when would you give it to yourself before you're retired? Two years out. Two years before you're separated from the military, start figuring out what that plan is going to be. Put everything in place. And then at the one year mark, take full advantage of every organization that's out there. Anyone that, that is willing to uh, provide services, um, set yourself up for success. So let's even take that, let's take that a, a, a step back farther. So absolutely two years is, is when you need to start planning it. But this is what I absolutely want anyone serving in the military to know. There is four thousand dollars a year set aside for you and your education take full advantage four thousand dollars for you to get credentialing for you to get college for you to get uh certifications so that when you step out it's not hey i was in a trailer i was a a, a boiler room or i you know I, I worked on helicopters 
hey, here are all the certifications that I earned while I was in the military. Oh, by the way, I've got this experience doing whatever that job was. Oh, by the way, I've been in leadership positions from here, here, and here. Here is a here is a resume that shows all of these things that I'm capable of doing, that I can be the solution to the problem that you have, as opposed to, well, I was in the infantry for four years. Okay, great. Guess what? Nobody is hiring infantry outside of the Army. Yeah, the Marines have some as well. But that, that, that if you're serving in the military and you're passionate about being an infantryman, that's awesome. But eventually that time will stop. And if you have not taken advantage of the educational uh, opportunities that are out there, you are doing yourself a disservice. So as soon as you're eligible to start taking college credentialing, any of that stuff, get after it. Two years prior to separation, start looking in and seriously digging into the things that that are that are going to set you up for success. Right? If you're interested in going into know, tech or you know computer science or programming, make sure that you've got all of those certifications. Maximize everything you can out of the the uh, the DoD uh, college fund, and then start looking at the other organizations that are also providing them. If anybody doesn't know about it, Onward to Opportunity provides one free credentialing and testing uh, for every military leaving. And if you walk away without one that someone else bought and paid for, you just, you're setting yourself up for, uh, uh, for a little bit harder time. Oh, I, I love all that, man. And it's taking advantage of the time that you have because here's basic reality. Uh, for the majority of everyone that's not aviation, <laughs> you're you're not working like a regular nine to five. There's I know there's there's some jobs and MOSs that are going to have a more consistent um, work schedule, and that gives you no excuse either because yeah. you know your you know your limits. So and there's other people in your organization doing doing the work to get those. Um, Credits. I know plenty of uh, uh, sailors in the aviation side that have gotten their college degrees. Uh, some of them nursing programs, yeah. um, and that's that's pretty damn hard to do while you're active duty and also um, clocking in at the ten hours every five days, you know, or even longer if there's a weekend. So <clears throat> there's there's uh, nothing really stopping you from taking advantage of those, except for yourself. There's not. Like I, I tell people this all the time, as as a special forces team sergeant, arguably one of the busiest jobs uh, in the military, uh, deployed downrange, I took a college class, and did it suck? Hundred percent. Did it when I come off of an operation to be exhausted, have to do all my post mission products and make sure all the weapons were were ready to go and the trucks were set up and uh, partner force was taken care of, and then walk over and try and write some stupid history paper. Yes, but you can do it, right? Because you're setting yourself up for long-term success, right? Interior to the military, you know you look better, you you look better on the to the boards uh when you've got college on, on, on your prayer port, right? Every MOS has a has a PME, right? It tells you the exact things that, that the board mm -hmm. members will look for, you know, E5, E6, E7, you know, all the way up. Maximize that. That's all you got. You want to get promoted? Maximize that. So, you know, college is one of those things that you absolutely can do. College or, or again, credentialing and, and certification. So, um, yeah, guys that, guys and gals that don't take advantage of that, I just I shake my head. It's like $4,000 a year. Just go take that college course. Put down the video game for 20 minutes a night and go to a college class. Hey, wait, I like my video games. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say put them down forever. I just said put them down for 20 minutes a night and, and knock out a history paper. Oh, yeah. I I, uh, I love that. And, you know, I, so I'm one of those guys who didn't get their degree. Um, so I do believe in the same thing. I took college classes. I took quite a few law classes, English classes, um, the and different business classes and such. And I, I just didn't. It wasn't really a degree I really wanted to get, and I focused my energy into something else. I was building uh, a, a different kind of future. So it's like I really 100% agree. You either need to be educating yourself uh, when you're off time, or you should be spending that off time building a business or building something 
for your future. You should be pouring into things that are going to benefit you in the future uh, while you're in the military. 100%. Yeah, right. yeah, I absolutely agree with that. You're, you 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 want to go down that entrepreneurial route and a, a degree isn't going to make anything for you? Great. But a business class will. Understanding finance, understanding banking, understanding supply chains and logistics. Educate yourself. A degree? Yeah, if it's important, grab it. If it's not, educate yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, brother. And so after you got out, you know, it's been 30 plus years in the in the army, man. When you got out, what did it take for you to find your purpose again? Because oh, and, and before question. before you dial in on this one really quick, I want everybody to think about this. When you leave the military, you feel like your sense of purpose is lost. And they've actually linked this to a, one of the major reasons why uh, veterans are finding themselves in situations of darkness and thinking about suicide and thinking about, you know, making decisions that they normally wouldn't make if they would just get that whole entire, well, what is my purpose? So with that all in mind, brother, what was it? So here's what I tell people every time they, you know, so I, I, I get, I don't know, three, 400 applications a year, uh, into the the special operators transition foundation and every one of them i do their intake interview and i tell every one of them you will never be as cool as your dd214 right that time has passed whatever cool stuff you did that that's that's on a document that no one else is going to look at right and you get cool plaques and you get some stuff on the wall but at the end of the day that time of your life is over in addition to that 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 reason for going to work every day right there is, uh, there's teammates that I need to, to, to take care of. There's a nation that I've got dedication to. There's an organization that, that has, has invested in me and I want to give back. And there is a need in the world for the services that we provide. That will never be replicated uh, outside of the military. It's just not going to happen, right? So what is it that you're going to do that's going to that's going to give you that purpose and intent? Now, there are there are amazing jobs uh, on this side of the uniform. So some of the, the some of the the the, the coolest things you learn that that you can do to make money are on this side of the uniform. But that purpose and intent, that drive that kept us going for so long, uh, doesn't exist because. Everything outside of the military is designed about making money, right? That's what organizations exist for. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nonprofits like that I work for. Uh, there's, you know, working at a hospital or, you know, all of these other things. But at the end of the day, most things are still geared around making money. So uh, if if you plan on finding the, the exact same purpose and intent in your in the work that you're going into, you need to be very purposeful in finding an organization that can provide that. Most of us are not going to. We're going to go to an organization that is going to use us for what we're good at, understanding leadership development, understanding how to develop people, a Rolodex if, if you're coming out of some of these higher positions uh, that, that people can tap into and an understanding of, of organizational development. And they want that because they want to make money. So what is it that you're going to do? Are you going to coach a little league team? Are you going to you know, join a jiu-jitsu gym? Uh, you know, is it, or, you know, are you, are you going to get involved in church? Um, you know, I, I had this uh, really unique opportunity. Uh, I had four boys that I went to church with that needed some additional man training, right? Uh, one of them's dad had passed away from COVID. Another one's dad had, had, had stepped out. Uh, another one had actually a really good dad, but just very busy, uh, and just needed some additional support. Um, and so I started working with one of them and, and I was just like, Hey man, why don't you come over? Well, I'll just put you through a workout, right? I've got a great home gym. Uh, we're going to learn how to do heavy circle therapy. You're having a bad day. You just pick up something heavy a couple of times, put it back down until you're too tired. Uh, and, and suddenly your day's gone better. And so for 18 months, almost two years, I ended up coaching these four boys uh, a couple of times a week in the weight room. Purpose and intent. I had somebody that I could, I could, I could just develop 
and train and help and have them work through their problems and have them work through hard things uh, and watch them gain in confidence. Uh, you know, the stronger they get, the, the more confident they would get. So it was time. Hey, man, great. You're squatting. Now let's start perfecting that squat. Hey, you're deadlifting. Now let's start getting some, some heavier weight on that. And yeah, we're going to push you to the point of failure. And then the next time you're going to come back in and you're going to be that much closer to it. So you, you absolutely will have to look for uh, purpose and intent because it's not going to be just readily available like it was while you were in the uniform. Now with that, <clears throat> let's talk about what is soft. Yeah. So the special operators transition foundation, um, you know, immediately following the raid uh, on Abbottabad uh, that, that took down Osama bin Laden, those same uh, those same operators coming out of out of SEAL Team Six uh, had been invited to a dinner with a group of influential uh, business uh, people uh, in the DC area. And sitting around that table, they they said, "Well, what are you going to do when 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 you're done?" And none of them knew. Like, I, you know, I don't I, I don't know. I don't even know, you know, how how what's going to happen when I get out. And they said that unacceptable, right? You have done so much for the nation. Uh, we've invested so much in you. We can't just let this this untapped resource uh, go to waste. And so they started an organization called Your Grateful Nation. Uh, and it was dedicated towards helping those coming out of the special operations community find, uh, you know, kind of, an, I, we, we, t we tell everyone you need to identify three things. Where are you going to live? Because this may be the first time you get to choose that. Functionally, what are you going to do? And then what industry are you going to do that in? Uh, and that's what the course was designed to do. So uh, it, it operated under that name, Your Grateful Nation, until 2020. Uh, when we took a look at it, we said, you know what? We're servicing the special operations uh, community. Why don't we get closer aligned with it? So uh, an SOTF, or a Special Operations Task Force, we borrowed that acronym, we turned it into the Special Operators Transition Foundation, and we provide uh, the most tailored, high-touch, uh, customized uh, transition program that provides education, training, and business connectivity for those coming out of the special operations community. Yeah, that's that's pretty awesome, man. The that, that whole entire transition time frame and being able to attend a um, not this class is not the right word um, to pretty much study what your transition is going to end up being like to be able to spend that time and dissect it and um, go through it layer by layer is instrumental. And um, Yogi and I, we got to spend some time fortunately with one of our mentors that runs a similar program called reboot. Yep. Um, and, and it was phenomenal. So I, I, I definitely 100% right behind you. You need to figure out uh, those, those things, rebrand yourself, repurpose yourself, re-identify yourself. And um, that's why we always have uh, one of the, uh, up in our corner, the logo swaps out with this transition, transition timeline app, which, oh, talks yeah. about, which talks about transitioning out of the military and pretty much gives you a 24 months uh, before you get out and then 12 months after you're out. So it's actually 36 months of uh, transitioning assistance and kind of tools. That is a, that is a really, really good point because that transition does not end at the, at the end of your terminal leave. Yeah. You're still growing into the person that you're going to be on this side of the uniform. I really like exactly. that. I really like exactly. that. And that's why we have this app on our, uh, show uh, we, we could not um, imagine a better tool for people to manage their transition and essentially you remember going through the uh, transition yourself uh, remember getting handed that piece of paper uh, that had all the checklists of stuff that you're supposed to do like and I don't know when you went to TAPS but I'm pretty sure you know being a senior leader you probably went once at your 20 year mark or something like that, or 22 year mark. And then you waited until it, probably about what, six months before you got out to attend a 
Task oh, class. Wow. Yep. Okay. So statistically, um, that six month to four month time frame, that's when most people actually go to TAPS class for the first time. Could you imagine going to a transition class for your first time and learning everything that you did and seeing all those timelines and going, well, I guess that opportunity is out the door. That opportunity is out the door. Thank you for your service, but you can't use this because you're not in the right timeline. Yep. yep. You get a you get a boil down transition because you did not know about any of your timelines. And that's why you finding good tools and spreading the word around um, about these different transition um, applications that we could use to benefit ourselves and access our benefits that were um, we earned. Yeah, absolutely. Service. And, you know, and people don't realize how busy that last year is. I mean, it's insane, right? I tell people this all the time. Look, if you're retiring, you're, you've got to go through all of the VA process. You've got, you're still going to be in a position. Uh, you've, you've got to go, you know, re-educate yourself, do credentialing, do certifications, do a uh, career skill bridge program or an internship program. Uh, oh, by the way, some weird piece of equipment that you got on a wrapping field in initiative like 22 years ago, they want that back. And so you got to scour your garage and find all of that. Uh, you know, just all of that garbage that, that has to happen. The clearing process alone where you've got to go, you know, hit up 37 different offices on some installation that you've never been to for some lady to give you, a, a, you know, a, a initials on a piece of paper. You're like, what does that do? She's like, I don't know. I just have to sign it. Like, great. Thank you. Thanks for letting me come in and visit with you today. But all of that stuff, right? If if you're not prepared for it, it is overwhelming. And what's going to happen is you're going to focus on what I need to do to make sure that I'm going to get out of the military, that I don't have to pay a ton of money to the central issuing facility, that uh, you know my life insurance is set up, uh, and you know start the process for the VA. And then you're going to completely bypass all of the things that's going to set you up for success. And I, the number of senior leaders that I, that I have seen and talked to and help that come and they're like, Hey man, I was, I was full throttle until six months out. And now I have no idea what I'm doing. Please help. It, that, that you're, you're, you're setting yourself up for a disservice if you were not looking at this two years out and making a plan in place, which is funny, right? That's what we do. We plan. We plan for operations. We've got long-range training calendars. We do weekly training meetings, and we do the, the sync matrices and all of these things to make sure that these things happen for years in advance. We're like, hey, man, what are you doing about yourself? I don't know. I don't have time for that. Well, you better make time for yourself. So, so yeah, transition plan. Right. I'm the service member. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still in, right? Um, devil's advocate. But Josh, you know, I'll figure it out whenever I get out. All I need is a job, right? I don't need anything else. Yeah. So you know what? It, you know the statistic on the on first time employment for veterans is like four months, because they get out. They're like, I, I just need a job. I can do anything. And then you get in there, and you realize I hate this place. I hate this job. <laughs> This isn't at all what I thought I was going to do. These aren't my people. This is not my tribe. Uh, and boom, you're out. So now you no longer have this, the, the safety blanket of, hey, I'm still getting a paycheck while I'm preparing myself. I'm still learning about this organization during a skills bridge program while I'm still getting the paycheck. All of that is gone. Now you've got a wife and a couple of kids and they're staring at you like, hey, brother, why are you unemployed? Like, okay. Good, good job. Yep. That's all you needed is that, you know, all you needed was a job. Not the case. You <laughs> need to set yourself up to find out the organization that you want to work for. Right. Where do you want to live? Functionally, what do you want to do? And the organization you want to do that in. Uh, and I mean, the, the number of jobs that I see people take that that they hate, but they're not they're, They were never set up for it. Hey, you're super extroverted. But you're going to go work in a, in a, you know, in in some, you know, supply chain management where you look at or a, you know, finance or something where you're looking at spreadsheets all day long. Yeah, of course you're going to go insane. That is not what's intended for you. 
or you're a super nerdy guy and that's what you love and you you take a sales position <laughs> you're gonna fly and fail in a heartbeat because that's not your comfort zone find out what makes sense for you figure out a path to get you there and then execute that plan it's look it, it it's simple when you say it right but the reality of it is if if you are trying to do this by yourself and you're trying to do it at the last second, you are going to have a very, very hard time for that first year, 18 months, 24 months outside of the military. And unfortunately, we see it where people go, oh, this isn't for me. I, I hate this. I th These aren't my people. And they start spiraling, spiraling, spiraling. And then we see that, you know, our 22 veterans a day because they did not set themselves up for success and they don't know how to operate in this environment. Agreed. And yeah. it, it's, it's a very, very sad thing to see. Um, part of, you know, Chris and I transitioning over the last year, um, it kind of shocked us to see the amount of any branch, right, um, that struggles so much, right? Um, luckily, I'm I'm going through the med board, so it was able to give me a different perspective, different timeline um, to appreciate more of the blessing of being in, in a limbo, right? And being able to figure out how to transition out, figure out the answer to those questions that you mentioned. Because prior to, my mind was like, well, you know, I'm taking care of the sailors. I'm taking care of this. I'm taking care of that. It'll be a disservice if I, it'll be selfish if I start taking care of myself solely right um <clears throat> exactly you know exactly. i know exactly what you're talking about the number of people that are like well no, I, I i've still got people i got to take care of hey man dod has mandated that the last year of service transition activities are your priority take advantage of that here's the other thing we're all just a cog in the wheel right you could be the greatest fill in the blank ever but you're going to leave somehow, some way, and someone's going to fill that up. Because I promise you this, the U.S. military is not going to fall apart when you leave. Right. It's just not going to happen. It may not be as good as it was for that brief little time, but someone's going to come in and they're going to fill that gap. Right? I always think of that uh, of that movie Moneyball, right? Hey, man, we can't, re we can't replace him, but we can replace him in the aggregate. And so, yeah, you could be, you could have been the best fill in the blank ever, but people are going to come in and be like, well, I'm not a good, as good as you were at that, but I'm, I can do this. And then this guy can do this and those gaps get filled. And honestly, the number of people that were complete rock stars in their organization that go back to visit their buddies a year later, and nobody even remembers who they are because yep. the whole cycle has been replaced. You know, one third of the unit gets replaced every year, three years time. You don't know anyone in that organization. Your impact, as great as it was, as much as we thank you for it, someone else is doing it. And that's why I tagged all the buildings. <laughs> <laughs> well, my boots are hanging over the are hanging over the power line as I walked out the. Out the <laughs> I, uh, you know, a little little story. Um, we used to paint murals on some of the buildings that we would uh, be working out of whenever we were going to different places. So I got quite a few murals up in uh, Coronado and some of those uh, transient uh, spaces that we would do uh, aircraft yeah. units in. I love them, so, man. I, military graffiti is some of the best in the world. You come up, you paint your patch, you paint your motto, you know, whatever it is. And then, you know, the next day it comes in. And this is what I really loved about it is you would walk into a, 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 a place that had all that and they were sacred. You didn't know anything about that unit, but that was sacred. And you would go find your own blank canvas to put yours up on. And it would, you know, 10 years, five years, whatever it was, whoever had that wall, that's their wall. Yeah. 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 No, I, absolutely. And uh, it kind of instilled some historical um, value. And it also it's funny how uniting something like that, you know, whenever a group of people get together to create that logo. Yeah. Um, and I used to do that for my, um, some of my 
uh, detachments I would take at one of my commands. It was it was fun. Um, so while you were transitioning, bro, what what was it that got you your own personal transition? What got you in the right mindset to transition? So, you know, the first phase that we put our fellows through uh, is we, we call it the uh, assessment and preparation phase. So assessing who you're going to be uh, as a civilian, right? As a veteran, as opposed to active duty, uh, and then preparing yourself for that. Uh, and when I went through the program, uh, the only executive coach we had was a lady named Melba Holiday. And she, she runs the uh, Atlantic Leadership Group out of uh, Maryland, right? Washington, D.C. area. Uh, and I commonly, I, I joke and refer to, to Melba as a witch because she can see your soul, right? <laughs> but, uh, but she is absolutely amazing. And there's not a person on this planet that has not gone through her executive coaching that would say a bad thing about her. But so I, I've been in the program and typically you get eight to 10 sessions of executive coaching during, during this phase. Um, and I was probably three or four into it, and there were some decisions that it was time to start making, uh, and I wasn't there yet. And I remember her going, well, Josh, I need you to tell me what is it that you want to do. And I remember being super frustrated. I was like, I tell you what I want to do, Melba. I want to be an SF Sergeant Major, but I'm too old for that. I'm too broken, and they're kicking me out, right? Uh, and she just got yes. Yeah. And I, I remember like it was that that kind of last moment of, of frustration, just kind of holding on as, as tight as you can. And she just started asking me questions about it, breaking it down. What did it mean? What you know, what was it that that I wanted to do or why is it that that job was so important? Uh, and at the end of it, she she goes, oh, so you want to get into leadership development? And I'm like, well, yeah, she goes, you know, they pay for people. They pay people to do that on the outside. It's like, well, I had assumed that they did, but I didn't really know that, right? And next thing you know, we went down this path, and sure enough, uh, my first job when I got out of the military was uh, I was the director of uh, training and leadership development. Does that not sound like a sergeant major's role, right? That's hey, make sure that the organization knows what they're doing, and and make sure that you're building future leaders. Were you running around like this the entire time? Yeah, just you gotta learn how to not knife hand anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah funny, it's, funny you say that. It's my leading hand. Yeah. Funny, funny you say that. I was given I was I was doing some leadership consulting um with a company and talking through scenarios of, of like you know, talking to your boss or whatnot. And you know how it is in the military when you when you have built a relationship with your superior officer. To the point that you can call them boss as opposed to sir or you know captain colonel whatever uh when 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 you've earned that trust that that's a thing right that's a, like that that that's an actual sign of 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 cohesion within the unit cohesion with the with within your leadership and so i'm you know i'm going through the scenarios i'm like hey boss this is what i want to do and and this guy raised his hand and uh he's like I, i'm offended by the word boss <laughs> and I, I just remember I paused and I I I, I couldn't I I just couldn't fathom it. I'm like offended by the word boss. What do you, what do you, what do you mean? He's like I just I don't wouldn't want to refer to anyone, you know, as my boss. I'm like what what are they? He's like well they're my supervisor. I'm like that's a lot of syllables when boss works a lot faster. But all right, <laughs> <laughs> supervisor. Uh, but I yeah I was blown away that that somebody could be offended by the word boss hey man, you you be you wow yeah <laughs> that's interesting that's interesting look it's a different world it's it is a different world on this side of the uniform oh man yeah no that's uh that's crazy so oh man um so how does how does one um how do they get find themselves at your program uh if they wanted to if they wanted to get part of it, well, what, yeah. what's the process for, for them? So we go out and we do what we, we, we have conversations with at the unit level, right? And we've got a very specific mandate and you'll find that a lot of, a lot of these veteran service organizations have mandates 
uh, for the people that they can provide their services to. And a, most of this comes out of the, or, or it always comes out of the bylaws of, of whoever established that organization. So for the Special Operators Transition Foundation, we work with the special operations community and we focus it to those that typically went to the X, right? That's the that's the the um, kind of guiding factor. So coming out of the Ranger Regiment, you have to be tabbed and scrolled, meaning that you you are fully qualified to, to work in Ranger. Uh, coming out of the Special Forces, you have to be 18 series, uh, 18 series. SEALs or Special Boat. Air Force Special Operations Command uh, or MARS operators. Um, there are select uh, JSOC intelligence units that 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 we also uh, provide our services to, uh, and so we we do a really good job of not only getting out and doing unit visits and explaining you know what it is we do, but we've now got over 500 alumni, and I've got 250 people in the program, uh, and so word of mouth is is spreading. So uh, 250, 275 is, is about as, as many as we want to have at any one given time uh, because we don't want to grow so large that we cannot give that customized and tailored approach uh, to, to their transition. So uh, if, you are, if you are in the special operations community uh, and you are interested into it, I encourage you to go to SOTF, S-O-T-F dot O-R-G. Uh, and apply for uh, apply for a fellowship. I will be the first person you talk to within the organization. I get all of those applications and I do all of the screening uh, on those. Um, so uh, if if that if if you were in that uh, in that tribe, uh, then I absolutely encourage you to reach out. Now, for anyone that that is not right, uh, there are several organizations that, that are out there uh, that are awesome. Hiring our heroes does a really good job. Um, um, uh, the Honor Foundation does an amazing job. The Commit Foundation does a really good job. Uh, and, you know, these are the ones that I know of, right? Uh, and you guys, you know, Mill uh, have access to a bunch of these organizations as well. So anyone separated from the military, I strongly encourage you uh, to reach out to one of these uh, veterans uh, veteran support organizations that that specifically looks at the transition process. Look, we all need to be honest. SFL TAP uh, or the TAP program across all of the forces, it is an answer to a congressional and the cheapest way for the military to go, yeah, 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 we're taking care of them. But we know that it doesn't have nearly the funding, it doesn't have nearly the time, and it doesn't have the capacity to reach out to all of the veterans to teach them what they need to do. I don't want to disparage the program because they do they do some it's infinitely better uh, than what it was five years ago, 10 years ago when it didn't even exist. Um, but it could be better. And honestly, I would love it if the if DOD came up with this incredible program that that organizations like mine didn't need to exist. But we do. And so I I encourage anyone and everyone serving in the uniform do not try this by yourself. Do not trust the the TAP program to be your sole source. Uh, and do not try this by yourself. But it's supposed to have all the answers, right? Yeah, it's supposed to. <clears throat> and, you know, not, going with what you're saying, right? We're not about bashing or anything like that. And honestly, it, it also depends a lot having to do with who the provider is, their level of experience, their level of buying into what they're doing. Yes, there are so many that are willing to help out and try to reach out. But when you're teaching a class of over, I don't know, 50 people at one time over three days, you're not going to be able to provide the right amount of of knowledge and or experience for it to be targeted as you said to you right yep. so i was always worried about personally about my transition out and every chance that i could i i went to a taps class and you're a hundred percent correct tap class 20 years ago 
is completely different than what top class is now, right? And it's gone through a lot of changes, a lot of iterations. But at the same time, there's been a lot of things and a lot of people that have either been really passionate and been not, right? I just did a TAPS class in Japan that was completely different than what it was here in San Diego, right? And not, not nothing bad to the providers. They were both great. It was just a total different program, right? So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, this part of the reason why Miltovet exists is because we were so worried that none of our service members, including ourselves, we were not aware of what's out there, right? The sea of goodwill. Yep. And the minute that we are, that that we start walking through that door and then we just see this massive torrent of organizations that are there, it's so overwhelming that we don't even want to, we don't even want to say hi, right? We're like, or two things happen, right? We don't, we're afraid that it's not going to serve us. We're afraid that it's a scam. So we don't talk to them. Right. When in reality, we don't give ourselves enough time to transition and or learn the proper things that we can use. And so many organizations are amazing with everything that they do. And thank you. Thank you for putting that out. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for taking care of our service members. Um, you're you're doing a huge part with specializing with your niche. Right. And, and that's what you do. I mean, that's your personal experience. I'd love for you to share a little bit about your background. Who, who's behind you, right? This, where, this side, yeah. So, yeah. John Wayne from the 1968 movie, The, the Green Berets. That's, uh, exactly. You know, we, we've got a lady that works at our organization, Sarah, and, and she's incredible. One of the most talented people I, I, I have ever worked with. But uh, she was like, hey, who's that guy? And I'm like, okay. We're, we're done here. You you cannot work at the Special Operator Transition Foundation and not know who who John Wayne is. She's like, okay. I'll... <laughs> so you know, here going back to uh, to to what you had just said, there are there are a lot of really good organizations that are out there dedicated to helping veterans uh, make this transition. Here's a couple of of words of caution that I would give anyone right if they're charging you it's not worth it uh they're they are now in it for themselves right uh as opposed to being in it for you there are so many vsos that 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 have tapped into the patriotism of america and have donors who are willing to to fund this to thank you for what you have done while you're in uniform uh the 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 really the areas that you should 100 percent focus on are any organization that's going to help you receive education and credentialing or experience and opportunity you should focus on organizations that will provide a network organizations that will help you write a resume and organizations that will help you uh understand how to uh how to interview well because here's the secret, right? Here's the secret to getting a job. This is the, the secret sauce of, of, of what uh, we do. Uh, and I'm happy to share this, right? You need to tap into an organization and network into somebody that wants you to work with them or for them and is willing to be an advocate for you on the inside of the company. You then need to have a tailored resume that proves that you have the experience to do the thing that that organization needs. And then you need to win the interview. Uh, and when I say win the interview, here's the thing. A job interview has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with that organization attempting to solve a problem. We need someone that can do this. And I'm looking for the first best person that it can do this. Not the best person the first best person. Here's the other dirty little secret. A hiring manager at an organization has, you know, a list of people that they need to get hired into that company. And if somebody walks up to them and says, hey, 
I've been talking with Chris and Yogi. These two guys are awesome. I absolutely want them on my team. These are the two positions I think they could fill. Here's their resumes. Set them up for success. Do you think that hire manager is going to be like, nah, I don't know. I got this whole other group of people that I think, you know, or I don't know. I need to do my due diligence and go find 20 other. No, absolutely not. They're going to take that path of least resistance and go, wait a minute. You guys have already been talking to these people. You think that they're a good fit for us? Yeah. Let me put them at the top of the stack. Guess what? That part of my day is done. Let me work on the rest of the garbage that I got to go take care of. Network, network, network. Talk to people you know. Talk to, And here's the other thing about networking. Here's the last two questions that you should ever ask uh, when you're networking. Hey, who else should I be talking to? And will you introduce me? Eventually, you're going to find somebody that wants you to work with them or for them and is willing to be an advocate for you on the inside of the company. That's all you got to do. It's not that hard. So, you know, I, I think the latest stats is, that say, Blanket resume application. So putting things in through LinkedIn or Glassdoor or Indeed, it's like a 6.4 or 6.5% ROI, return of investment. So if you put out 100 of those applications, you're going to get to talk to six. Or you network into it, which means the other 90, what, 90, 93.7, whatever the math is, not a mathematician, those jobs are filled by doing exactly what I what I told you to do. Network, have a tailored resume, win the interview. You're gonna get hired. I love it, man. That's such that's such great advice that I'm hoping all of our listeners are uh, really tuning into. And um, brother, we could probably be on here all day long, man, talking and swapping st stories and stuff. But uh, what I want to do is make sure that we got everything that you wanted to reach out to our listeners. Is there anything else, any say rounds or alibis? Uh, you know, the, the big ones that, that we've kind of ha hammered away at here, find an organization that is providing you free services because they're the ones that legitimately care about you. Take full advantage of all of the opportunities that are presented in front of you. Full advantage. Set yourself up for success by doing this well in advance uh, and know that it is a process. It is a transition process. If you're thinking of it as a one-day event, it is not. Set yourself up for success. And then when you've made that transition, realize that you still have to learn how to be a civilian. And it is a different world, my friends. It is a different world. <laughs> it sure is. Um, hey. Uh, Josh, thank you for coming on here, uh, hanging out with us. To all of our listeners, uh, get linked in with Josh on uh, the link down below. It's also going to be in the comments. Also, take a look at his website, uh, SOTF.org. It's also going to be in the comments. Hey, everybody right now, I want you to share this with one person that's out there that you know needs this. And the little comments that uh, Josh made at the end of everything. So who else do you think we should be talking to, Josh? Oh, man, that is a good point. Look, <laughs> that is a really good point. So uh, there are some really – how many people have you had from Hiring Our Heroes? Uh, um, have we had – we've had – We haven't had Hiring Our Heroes, no. No, okay. no, yeah, I'm thinking of someone else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's what, once we get offline, I'm going to start making introductions because hiring every heroes, they do a great job. They are really, really good at, at, at helping uh, uh, helping folks get that business connectivity. And yeah. th there are jobs out there. There are, there are really good jobs out there. So, uh, yeah, if you're coming, if you're in the special operations community, call me. Reach out to me. Let's let let me take care of you. Uh, if if you're big, big military, right? Big Navy, big army. Uh, Hire our heroes is, is one of the best ones out there. So strongly encourage it. Again, yeah. one of it at Banks Foundation, the Janus program. Set yourself up with the knowledge to know how to go through a good transition. I love it. I love it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Return to Roots, Milda Vet. It is your transition. It is not all rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> Take charge of it. 
Miltavet out. 